and welcome to the video guys make sure you guys like and subscribe and comment in the comment section before i get into the content i just want to say all glory honor and praise and power to my father in heaven and to the lord jesus christ of nazareth the king of kings and lord of lords today i'm going to be talking about why google makes people unspiritual i was i, I had an assembly in my high school many years ago and i always remember this assembly because this guy came in he had this real jazzy haircut and he came into the assembly and pretty much told us that he was only there to reach five people that although there were several hundred people in the assembly that he would probably only reach five people on this day and pretty much what his speech was about was that the way the world is moving the way the world is advancing with technology that technology is taking away the imagination from children he said back when he was younger his little sister would get a Barbie doll for her birthday and she would have to pretend through her imagination, through developing her mental skill and her imaginative skill that her baby was pooping, that her baby was walking, that her baby was talking. She had to go into her imagination and develop an area of her brain to, in, in pretending that it was doing things it wasn't doing. But he said, nowadays the baby gets up, it talks on its own and you don't need any more imagination. The baby is a fully functional robot. And it's taking away the imagination from the children. And he went on in his speech about how we have to remember not to lose sight of our imagination. That all those technology has its benefits and its perks. But that not to get away from utilizing and developing the skill set of the imagination by which we get our, our ideas. Right? If we rely on robots, we become robots. Right? Because we all become carbon copies of one another. Each following after the robotic system that we have. And then when you listen to modern music and a lot of things happen on today, even if you look at like a lot of TikTok and Instagram trends, it's just different people doing the exact same video. It's different artists doing the exact same styles of music. The uniqueness, the imagination, the creativity is beginning to go. And once people find something that hooks, everyone just rides the wave until someone produces a new wave and they ride that one. And so I seen what he was saying, that we're becoming robots because we're losing our own identity because, re because society has given us an identity and taken away our imagination to give us an identity of their own. So as I began to ponder this concept today, what I began to realize is that Google makes people unspiritual. This is going to be a message for Christians, that Google makes people unspiritual. And I'm going to, tell, I'm going to talk about, a bit about why. I've been having these dreams lately. I had these two reoccurring dreams and in each of the dreams, I was holding old cell phones. In one of the dreams, I was holding these two old flip phones. And these two old flip phones were phones that I had had many years ago. In the second dream, somebody had given me two older phones, an older Android and like an iPhone one or two. And I've been having these old phones and I was like, man, what do these dreams mean? And I began to, I had a couple friends that can interpret dreams and my dad is good with interpreting dreams and I began to Google if anybody had any Christian interpretations on what dreams of old cell phones meant. And I, I, I got a plethora of different answers but nothing quite stuck with me, right? Nothing quite stuck with me. Uh, I, I, and so I, I continued to think about it, I continued to ask more people and, and try to get an answer to what this dream meant. But still nothing quite stuck with me. And eventually one night I woke up at about 2.30 in the morning and you know, normally how I've been, lately how it, has, how, how it has been, if I wake up at 2.30, sometimes I'll pray, but if I'm not praying and I'm not sleepy, then I'm on my bed scrolling through my phone, whether I'm writing ideas for a video, whether I'm scrolling through Instagram or YouTube shorts or something like that, but I'm on my phone just swiping through, scrolling through, or I'm Googling things and reading people's articles, whatever, but I'm on my phone in the bed until I get sleepy. But this time I didn't, I put my phone down for a second. I put my phone down and I began to sit there for a bit. And as I began to sit there and just dwell on and think about things, thinking about some of the dreams that I had, all of a sudden the meaning to my dream just came to me. It came to me in the sense that it was almost like a double entendre in the sense that not only am I learning the meaning of the dream, but I'm doing the meaning of the dream right now in this moment. And the meaning of the dream for me was returning back to the old phone. So now, back in the days when we had the flip phones, there was no Google, right? We had to sit down and ponder. We had to sit down and spend more time in reflection and think. The Bible says when Peter was given a dream in Acts 10, he wondered within himself about the meaning of the dream. Many verses in the Bible tells us to meditate on the word of God. But I've realized that I have not spent a lot of time in reflection lately because I've been so busy just on my phone. And because I have this phone, I can always find an answer. I can always read somebody's article. 
article. I can always reach out to one of my contacts who, who has the skill set that I'm looking for. And I'm no longer relying on the Holy Spirit that I've been given by God through Jesus Christ, but I'm relying on the resource of Google, the resource of my contacts, the resource of having a smartphone by which I can utilize or contact anyone at any time to receive revelation. So while technology at one point has stolen and taken away the imagination of man, I feel like technology now is also taking away revelation because not as much of us are spending time getting personal revelation because we haven't, we don't have to, time is money, right? That's what we say today. That's the cliche, right? The time is money. We don't have time to reflect because I can so easily get on Google and find an answer in five minutes um, or, or, or five seconds, rather. I can text my friend who knows this and get an answer in five seconds. I no longer have to figure it out. There was a time when you had to figure it out, where you had to rely on the Holy Spirit. I tell people, um, the printing press wasn't invented to the 15th century. So the way that, especially today, now we can each have a Bible on our phone. Each person can download the Bible app to his phone and have his own personal Bible on his cell phone in the midst of all his other apps. But there was a time when the average person could not afford to have their own personal Bible. Not only could the average person not afford to have their own personal Bible, but the global rate of literacy just 100 years ago was at about 20 or 30 percent, which means just 100 years ago, 70 percent of the world could not read. And this is five centuries after, four centuries after the printing press or five centuries after the printing press was invented. So not even though the printing press where Bibles are now and books are now readily available, the global rate of literacy is still just 20, 30 percent, which means that the average person could not even read. Right. If you wanted to hear the word, you would go to a church and you would go to a place where you could hear the word. But the average person couldn't read the word on themselves. But that did not disqualify them from having the Holy Spirit and being able to understand the gospel. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance. I want to read some verses about the Holy Spirit because I feel like we're, we're relying on Google. We're relying on technology and we're not relying as much as we could on the Holy Spirit that can actually give us the true, authentic, heavenly answers that we're seeking for that Google cannot provide. The Holy Spirit can bring things to your remembrance that you cannot find on Google. And even if you happen to find it on Google, you're still going to have five, six other different answers to select. And you're going to have to decide which one you think is the one. But when it comes from the Holy Spirit, you know it's true the first and only time. I want to read some verses about the Holy Spirit just because I think we have to get back to this, right? We have to get back to a place where we learn to have reflection. That we, we take time, take 10 minutes to reflect. You know what I realized that if you, you know, I, I learned this a long time ago, that you can do things you didn't think you can do if you actually like gave it some time. Like I would, fit, I would be like doing like a hard puzzle or a hard riddle, riddle or something like that. And I wouldn't know the answer. I wouldn't know how to figure out the puzzle. And if I would just sit with it for 10 minutes, it would be like a light bulb would go off and I'd figure out the answer. But I think now, because everything is coming so readily quick, our food comes quick, our work comes quick, everything that we want, entertainment, dopamine hits, it all comes so quick now. So because it's all coming so quick, we don't take our time for personal reflection. We don't take our time for meditation. I'm not talking about new age, transcendental, uh, uh, humming and, and, and crossing your, your, your legs and putting out your fingers meditation. I'm talking about sitting down and reflecting on the word of God, reflecting on your day today, reflecting on what you learned, reflecting on what, what, what you saw today, reflecting on the messages you saw, the signs you saw, seeing, is, did, did, was this from God? I think I heard a word from God. I think I saw something today on a billboard and I think that was from God but let me take five minutes let me take 10 minutes to just sit down and meditate and reflect on whether or not that was from God and a lot of times you'll realize that you'll get an answer a lot sooner than you think if you don't rush to technology and you rely on the Holy Spirit in you and to, to give you an answer right let's not make technology our God it's time to return to the old phones there's nothing wrong with phones but you as you see Google is now advancing now, now we, they have a platform out called ChatGTP, which is an even higher level advanced form of your own personal assistant that can answer any question that you have. What does that sound like? That sounds like a counterfeit of what I'm talking about. Now, we, now, we, now everyone can have their own personal assistant that has its own level of intelligence. And I did a video about that called Is, is Artificial Intelligence Demonic? I want to read a quote. I'm going to get into those verses that I was talking about, the verses about the Holy Spirit, but I want to read a quick quote, 
a, a quick quote, a quote that I saw that the, uh, from the CEO of Google. I believe I seen an interview with Elon Musk talking about what the CEO of Google was saying. And let me see if that I can find this quote for you guys really quick. So it was a quote pretty much saying that Elon Musk says that Google's goal is to create a digital god. Right, and it says the Antichrist will use AI. I was saying, but, but Google has, and it's, it's, it's not as advanced of a digital general intelligence like chat GTP is, but it's still an outlet. And now it's so censored now, but it, it's still an outlet by which you can access information and rely on people rather than, rather than relying on the Holy Spirit in you. It's, it's become its own digital idol for you to use, to go to for answers, for you to seek answers from and while Google right now gives you the answers of other people, now Google, now technology has grown to where there's going to be a general intelligence to provide you with every answer that you think that you need. So here's a couple of verses I have about the Holy Spirit that I think are very key. This is 1 John 2, verses 26 through 27. It says, these things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So the Bible says the Holy Spirit, the anointing that we receive, we don't need anyone to teach us, right? Because the anointing that we receive will, will, will teach you concerning all things. But how many people rely on that anointing? How many people that have received that anointing rely on that anointing more than they rely on their smartphone, more than they rely on, 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 on Google or, or, or a lot of these AI programs and technologies that they have today, more than they rely on a phone call from a friend? There's nothing wrong with, with calling a friend or asking for advice or seeking a friend for prayer. We are a body and we rely on one another as a body. But we don't, we, you want to also have time of reflection as well, not to lose sight of reflection because you think a faster answer could come from Google or a friend. Let me tell you what else the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. This is John 16, 13. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you the things to come. So the Bible says the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Now, are, do you rest? Do you listen? Are you, are, do you, are you sensitive to the Holy Spirit? I'm going to say a prayer at the end of this video that we become sensitive to the Holy Spirit, that we become sensitive and that we begin to trust and rely on the Holy Spirit more than we rely on the technology of man. Because I, one thing that I feel like is happening is that a lot of this technology is being given to us so that we depend on a programmable system to tell us what the system wants us to know instead of giving us the heavenly and divine truths that, the, that God wants us to know. That now we, 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 we trade that in to get a quick answer from Google, to get a quick fix, to get something to, set up, to satisfy our desire for an answer, our desire for a need, our desire for that quick dopamine hit. We have an outlet through technology now, and I believe that is affecting us spiritually in a way that is not positive, and that's why I believe I was having the dream about having the old phones. It's just not to, not, to, not, not to lose sight of the old phones because now we have the new phones, not to lose sight of the times where I used to reflect, the times where I used to think. I remember I used to spend a lot of time in thought and processing things and learning things and thinking about my day and the lessons that I've learned. And I've, I've kind of traded some of that in so that I could get a quick answer, a quick fix, a dopamine hit of, of Google or, or a dopamine hit of TikTok or Instagram. And, and I begin to trade in some of, that, some of that, that, that reflection time, that time when you would rely on the Spirit of God, right? So, that, that, so the Bible says the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. What else does it say? Mark 13, 11 says, whenever you, are, whenever you are arrested, this is him talking to the disciples and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, so you, you don't if you have the Holy Spirit, you don't even have to worry about what you'll say if you ever brought before a judge or a council. It'll give you the words to say, right? One more verse I want to read about this. I want to read about the Holy Spirit. One more verse I want to, well, I'm going to read two more. One is John 14, 26. It says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. If the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. It will remind us of everything that, 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 that Jesus has said to us. It will bring scriptures to your mind. It will bring, it'll, it'll, it'll tell you the things to come. One more verse I want to read to you about the mind of Christ. This is a bit longer. This is, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 16. It says, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? 
Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been given freely to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with the spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So because we have the Holy Spirit of God that searches all things, we have the mind of Christ. And the Bible says that the spiritual man judges all things because he has the mind of Christ, but he himself is judged by no one. So I, I just make this video today to say that we have to remember to reflect Rely on the Holy Spirit. Rely on you having the mind of Christ to come to certain conclusion and answers. You don't have to always try to run to get a quick answer from Google or a quick answer from your friend. It's not that there's something inherently wrong with this, but it's not to lose, not to lose, uh, not, I mean, it, just to hold on to, to the understanding and the faith that the Holy Spirit can teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. But do you trust in the information that you can receive from the Holy Spirit. Do you, do you trust enough to say, I'm just going to sit here for five minutes and wait, and I'm going to think about this, I'm going to reflect on this answer, and I'm going to wait. I'm going to, I'm going to wait. And I'm going to, you know, so as I began to do that, the meanings to my dreams just, I had, I had a bunch of dreams this week. I had about, a, like, maybe 10 or 12 dreams this week, or within the last week and a half or whatever it was. And I began to just reflect. I, at first, I was like, I would ask my dad, hey, dad, I had this dream, what you think? Because my dad is really good with dream interpretations. And my dad was like, what you think about it first? And I'll tell you what I think. And I'm like, man, I, I don't think anything about it. I, I called you, man, you the, you the dream guy. And what I realized was that I wasn't taking no time on my, because I have my dad, because I know these people that can do this, I, I didn't even take time to reflect on my own. But as I began to wake up, I thought I was waking up at 2 a.m. because I, some, more, a lot of times I'll pray or or, or something like that, but I said, no, or I'll be scrolling on my phone, but I said, man, I, I'm going to take a couple minutes to reflect. I'm a, I'll pray, I'll worship, but I also want to take some time to reflect. So I'm, I'm making this video to encourage you, brother, or you, sister, that is listening to it, to take some time for reflection. When you have a question, anytime you get a question, before you run to Google, Ask God in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I have this question. Is, is there something you can tell me or give me about this that I might have an answer? And then just wait a little while. Think about it, meditate on it, ponder it, and wait a little while. And it's almost like when an answer comes, it's almost like a knowing. It's like this dawning of a knowing. You know it's the answer. If, if, you, if you're debating on what it means, and that's probably not the answer. It's like a dawning or a knowing that kind of just comes. It's like an imparted knowing. It's, like you'll, it's not that you'll hear a voice necessarily. Not that you could. You could hear a voice. But it's just like, oh, it's just a knowing. You just kind of, it's like a knowing dawns. And you, oh, that's what that means. Okay. So that's the video I want to make today, guys. Google is making people unspiritual, but tap into reflection. Trust in the Holy Spirit. Pray that you be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we shall receive power from on high. That the Holy Spirit gives us power, love, and a sound mind. And if you have not received the Holy Spirit, you can ask for it. The Bible says, God will give the Holy Spirit to, to those who ask. If you ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you be filled with the Spirit of God, for Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Ghost and fire. He said, when John came, John baptized us with water. But when Jesus came, he baptized us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So if you pray the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, ask that I receive the full baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire through our Lord Jesus Christ. For I believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh and gave his life on the cross for the sins of the world, was buried for three days and resurrected from the dead and sits at your right hand where he waits his enemies to be made a footstool for his feet. I confess Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Son of God and he is the only way to the Father. When you make that confession, when you believe that in your heart, not just in your mind, when that's true and you believe that fully in your heart and you ask God for the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And you can do that right now if you wish. If you would like me to pray with you, you can email me at eddiefuser.gmail.com. But I just want to pray for everybody listening really quick and for myself as well. 
Um, and we pray together. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father in heaven, O oh, gracious, loving, and merciful, and good Father, I come before your throne of grace here with you two for those who will listen to this video. I just ask that we begin to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, Father. I know that many people of old didn't have the Bibles, didn't have the technology, the advancement that, that we had today, that some of the, the apostles didn't just have books of books of scripture that they can carry with them everywhere they went. Many times they had to rely on having the gift of the Holy Spirit that gave them power to minister, power to preach and do signs and wonders in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just ask that as a listeners, Father, that we will begin to uh, uh, just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, that we will rely and trust on the Holy Spirit, especially as the times are advancing when society is trying to give us more and more and more answers of the world, but that we rely on the heavenly answers that come away of your Spirit, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is actually we be sensitive to your Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we may hear and perceive what the, what the Spirit is saying to us and teaching us. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, O gracious, loving, and holy Father. To you be all praise and glory forevermore. And to our Lord Jesus Christ, be honor and glory forever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name, I say amen. So that's the prayer I say, guys. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Don't allow Google to make you unspiritual. Before you Google, before you call, before you text somebody, ask God and wait. Reflect for a little while. Spend some time in reflection. That time, that five minutes you spent on swiping on Instagram, spend it in reflection. Take, at least cut it in half. All right, I'm going to spend 10 minutes on TikTok and 10 minutes in reflection. At least begin to cut it in half or cut it into, into, into a fourth. I'm going to spend three-fourths of the time in reflection. But however you do it, guys, all glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ. Make sure you guys hit the like button and comment in the comment section. If anybody wants to donate, if this video helped you or moved you in any way and you would like to donate to my ministry, I'm going to put an image on the screen right now where you can you go to my Venmo or my Cash App and donate. It's also in the description box and in the comment section as well. Peace and love, guys. Appreciate you.